Hi, welcome to episode four of the Fiverr Bound podcast. My name is Alexandra. I live in Adelaide, Australia with my husband, two teenage sons and our dog Shorty. And I am coming to you today on a Saturday afternoon. It is Saturday the 20th of February. How is it the 20th of February already? And I am having a coffee in a brand new mug that I will talk about later. And thank you so much for joining me for this fourth episode amazing that we're at number four already. Um, I am really blown away by the response so far and really appreciate that you've decided to watch me today. Today I have one finished object for you. Um, I went through a little bit of a funny castonitis phase <laughs> this last couple, these last couple of weeks and have started a few new projects. Not too many but that there are a few new things but I have managed to finish one thing and the one object that I have finished you haven't actually seen before because I started it and finished it in one week which I'm very happy with. So um, I hope you have a beverage with you whether it's tea, coffee, a glass of wine, whatever you like to drink. I hope you have a knitting project or a crochet or whatever crafty thing you like to work on with you as well. And uh, let's get started on the knitty things. My only finished object for today is one that I started on Sunday. So I started this Sunday the 14th on Valentine's Day. I finished it on Friday, yesterday, um, and I'm so happy with it. So this is something that I've designed myself and I'll explain why in just a moment. Um, but I will show you what it is. So here is my first and only finished object. Hopefully that has focused okay. Now this is a big chunky blanket. I have it ready to gift this weekend in a gift box that I just bought today, which it kind of fits in. I'm hoping once I put the lid on and put a bow around it, it will stay closed because this is a big monster blanket. This blanket is 40 inches wide and around 60 inches long. I haven't actually measured the whole finished object yet, so I'll do that before I package it up. I knit this in extremely chunky wool with or yarn with um, 25 millimeter needles. So I'll show you the yarn that I used or I'll show you the ball band for the yarn that I used. Your eyes are not deceiving you it is a massive ball band. This is how big the skein was. They, they were 100 sorry <laughs> They were one kilogram balls and this was purchased from Spotlight which is a big box store that's local to me here in Australia and it is I think an 80% acrylic 20% wool. Yes that's right. So there was a hundred and six there were 160 meters in each ball. I had two of these. Now I bought these um, probably 18 months ago. Every winter Spotlight comes out with a new chunky style yarn um, that they basically have for a very limited time only. So I was able to pick up two balls when I visited at one point with the intention to knit my sister a blanket. Noting this was 18 months ago. But it is chunky wool 
and I was only able to get the two balls. I checked every other store, they were sold out everywhere by the time I found these and was not able to get a third ball so I had a bit of a worry that I wouldn't have enough yarn to make a decent sized blanket because I bought some for myself a couple of years before that or a year or so before that in a slightly different um, it was a different yarn but same sort of concept and I had about 10 balls of 200 grams so I had around the same amount so two kilos worth just over and I didn't feel like I had enough yarn and that blanket isn't quite the right size and I'm not 100% happy with it so I was really concerned that I would run into the same problem here but I had intended to design something to make with it to make sure that it was big enough um, and I was happy with the size of the finished object. So what I did about two or three weeks ago, actually probably longer, about a month ago, and I haven't talked about this before because it is a gift knit for my sister and she may watch this. I'm not sure whether she does or doesn't, but just on the off chance that she may tune in for an episode, I didn't really want to talk about it. But I decided about a month ago that yes, it's time to start because they were building a house and I knew that they were quite close to moving in sometime towards the end of February. And I did a swatch and I put it aside, still wasn't 100% happy with it but it gave me a good indication of the stitches that I wanted to use and how much yarn went into a row depending on how many stitches I did across to get around a 40 inch width and I really wanted it to be about 60 inches long which I have I think exceeded a little bit. Um, which I'm happy with, that's fine if it's a little bit longer, not a problem at all. Um, so I put it aside and lost motivation to knit on it because it is chunky wool and that is not my favourite kind of wool to work with. I do find it hurts my hands a little bit. But yes, I ended up designing it myself. It is um, a garter stitch broken up with some slip stitches as I showed before. You can see the slip stitch columns there. Hopefully that is in focus. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I just realized my microphone hadn't been turned on. I hope that the audio has been okay <laughs> for that first section and I do apologize if it wasn't. So I've just turned the microphone on so hopefully that's a little bit better for your ears. Okay, on to this process of knitting this blanket. So I wanted to knit it on big needles and I chose 25 millimeter needles, which are not my favorite. I do not enjoy knitting with big needles. It hurts my hands and my arms get tired and the weight of the blanket was just, is just too hot on my lap. So I, I, it's not my favorite way to knit. So a lot of love has gone into this gift knit. But um, these are the needles that I knit the blanket on and they are some that I picked up at my local spotlight store. I don't love them, they're plastic and the cord is very inflexible but they do, they did the job and actually I was quite happy with the progress of this blanket. I was able to knit basically a quarter of a ball a night over this last week and then I put in a couple of nights and Friday in particular where I put in a little bit of extra time to make sure I could finish it by the weekend. So um, yes, I will add a link below to the project page for this uh, blanket just so you can see what I did. Um, there is no pattern for it. I don't think I will write one up because I will never find this yarn again. Um, but I might just put a few details in of how I, what I did to figure, it, figure out how to knit this blanket. I hope my sister loves it. I am excited to see her new home this weekend and to gift it to her. Um, so much love has gone into it really. Um, a little bit of procrastination as well. <laughs> but um, that is the nature of gift knitting for me. Uh, once I get inspired it's all systems go but sometimes it takes me a little while to feel that inspiration to start something that I'm not 100% sure about. So I'm really pleased with how this one worked out. Okay, so that is my only finished object for this for this episode. I keep saying week. I don't record weekly. <laughs> I record about fortnightly. But anyhow, on to my works in progress. 
Um, I have a couple of older works in progress, one of which hasn't seen much love, so I don't think I'll show it to you today. So that is the Drifter Shawl. I was hoping to have it finished this week, but I spent a lot of time on that blanket, which took me away from some of these whips. So I will move on to the whips that I actually have made some progress on. So the first whip that I will show you today are my February socks. My February socks are being knit in the Desert Vista Dye Works yarn. So I've shown this before. So it's Desert Vista Dye Works. The colorway is Somebody Loves You. It is 75% uh, superwash merino, 25% nylon. That's the tag there. And I have made some amazing progress on these socks actually. Now that I am knitting these concurrently, not quite two at a time, but <laughs> it's a bit of a mess actually. So I have finished the body of one sock. There you go. And I have just a couple of rows left of the other. Before I start the toe degreases. These are knitting up so wonderfully. I have decided with these to knit long tubes. You can see my little separate balls there as well. And my aim here is to knit afterthought heels. I haven't done that with a pair of socks for myself for a little while. Well, that's not true. I did that at Christmas time last. I love the look of um, an afterthought heel on self-striping yarn. So I have already picked up the stitches here for the first one. So what I'm planning to do here is a true afterthought heel. So I've already put my needles in and you can see the stitch marker here. This is where I will be cutting to insert this heel. Um, I follow the Kirby Werby af True Afterthought Heel tutorial. I'll link that for you down below. I find this process so easy now that I've done it three or four times. And yes, it's just a matter of measuring from your toe where you're going to put your heel. And I like to do that once I finish the sock. Um, so I know some people will mark the heel while they're knitting and then knit down. I finish the tube and then I think about where the heel placement will be. That's my usual way to do it. So once I finish both socks, I will then mark, or I already have actually marked where the second one will be, even though um, I was saying that I mark it usually once I finish the foot. But because I've got this matching sequence of stripes happening here, um, I know that the other heel will fall at pretty much the same spot through that red stripe. So I have already put a marker here to indicate where that will be. And once I finish knitting on this second sock, which is not far, I could probably finish it today. Um, I will start cutting in the afterthought heels and knitting those. So realistically, I think these will be done by the end of this week. Now I didn't mention that this is part of a knit along that I'm doing. It's a year, year long knit along with Desert Vista Dye Works. It's called the Desert Vista, or the seventh annual Desert Vista Dye Works sock knit along, I think. I will provide some details or a link to the Ravelry details below in case anyone wants to join in. You have to use Desert Vista Dye Works yarn only. You can't use anything else for heels, toes and cuffs unless it's by Desert Vista Dye Works. And you're required if you want to participate to knit a pair of socks each month that starts no earlier than the first of the month and finishes no later than the last day of the month. Given that February is a 28 day month, that means I only have eight days to finish these and I'm well on track to do that. <laughs> so I will have these done within a few days at this point. I've been loving knitting on these during my lunch breaks at work. Occasionally I'll knit on them in bed if I feel that I haven't I'm not tired enough to go to sleep or I haven't knit enough that day. <laughs> I'll do a bit of a catch-up session in bed and they have been a real joy to work on. I'm really enjoying working on them on two separate needles two at a time concurrently. Um, it just feels like they're growing really fast even though I don't have a single one finished yet in full. Um, 
I will be finished both very quickly so that is wonderful so that's my work in progress number one. Oh, I forgot to say that I'm housing these in my Sandy by the Lakeside project bag. I have talked about this in previous or in my last episode. Um, so they are living in there at the moment unless I'm in transit, in which case they live in a smaller little pouch that is actually out of reach right now. But if you have a look at last week's episode or last fortnight's episode, um, I talk about it more there. My second whip that I've been working on this fortnight has been my hipster shawl by Hohi Locatelli. That is living in my project bag that I sewed last year sometime. Um, just a basic zip bag. I attach my progress keepers or my stitch markers to the zip pull usually just to make sure I have some handy in case I need it or need them. And I've made quite a bit of, well, I guess a decent amount of progress on this. I maybe spent two evenings on this in reality. But here it is. So you can see my progress keeper here. That marks where I was last time I showed it to you. And I've done the lace section, which, you know, took a little bit of concentration and the second um, slip stitch section there. I might zoom it in for you. So I'm really loving the way this is turning out. I'm absolutely adoring this yarn that I dyed up. This is being knit in my hand dyed yarn that I dyed myself. Um, I talked about this again more in the previous episode, but just to recap, it's a fingering weight yarn. I dyed it with Kool-Aid and food coloring and the yarn was actually supplied by Knit Crate in a membership crate that I had last year. Um, and I absolutely love it. I'm loving knitting with it. I cannot wait to have this finished. I was uh, getting ready to go somewhere last weekend and I had my outfit already and I thought, I just need a shawl. I just need a shawl in this color. <laughs> But it's not ready yet so I think it was after that day that I put a bit of time into this because I really want to get this knit up so I can enjoy wearing it this color is just so me I feel like if I was to be a color this would be it <laughs> so I'm knitting this shawl on uh, 4.5 millimeter US 7 needles on my Chow Gu interchangeable set I absolutely love these needles. They're my go-to. I'm really enjoying knitting on this. I am looking forward to putting in some extra time. Now that I've shown you, I will move this progress keeper up, but um, I cannot wait to get this one finished and completed and be able to wear it. Absolutely loving this project. Well, that's it for my whips that are not new cast-ons. Now I have two new cast-ons to show you. There were actually three new cast-ons since the last episode, but I've already shown you one as a finished object. <laughs> so my second first cast-on, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. My next whip <laughs> is not being housed in the project bag at the moment, but in theory, it should be living in this bag. But because I'm trying to work on it regularly, I haven't been putting it away. But this project bag was uh, sent to me last year by um, the lovely Julianne, who you have heard me rave about on and on and on. <laughs> She is from Lovebird Lane and last year I signed up to one of her yarn clubs. It was one of it was a stay at home yarn club while we were in lockdown during quarantine, well during COVID back in April, May, June-ish. Um, and this was one of the lovely extras that was uh, provided in that yarn club. It's a beautiful bag um, that is very nice and soft. It has some gorgeous patterning on it. Very cozy llamas, pigs, rabbits, a bear, <laughs> and they're all wearing pajamas. We were cozied up at the time with the COVID lockdowns. It was very much a stay at home, cozy feel yarn club. This bag has a couple of pockets on each, or well, actually two pockets on this side and one pocket on this side, and a lovely mauve fabric in the middle there that you might be able to see. Mauve is one of Julianne's favorite colors and this is probably why I love her stuff so much. <laughs> it's one of mine too. 
So that's the project bag. It will live in if I'm putting it away. But honestly, right now, it's sitting, or well, the yarn is sitting in my yarn bowl that I received as a gift from my sister a couple of Christmases ago. Um, because I feel it's just easier to manage the yarn in here while I'm knitting on it. So, <laughs> I haven't talked about the project yet, have I? <laughs> so this is the beginnings of, if I can untangle it. So this is my chromatic cowl. Now I am making the larger size. The chromatic cowl is a pattern by Amy Detjen. I may have said that incorrectly. I'm sorry, Amy. So this is actually, I'm showing you my contrast side. That's a bit silly. This is the main color side. And this is the contrast side. And these yarns, I will tell you now. So my main color, which is this side, <laughs> is this gorgeous yarn. This is by Lovebird Lane which is why I also chose that bag for this project. It's her Nundle Sock Self-Striping Base. It's a 75% Merino, 25% um, nylon. It is a fingering weight yarn and it is in the colorway called Mulled Wine. Absolutely in love with this colorway. I got this yarn just before Christmas. I ordered it in one of Julianne's updates and was so in love with it. I thought, yeah, I could make socks, but I really want to wear this. Oops, sorry if I just hit my microphone. <laughs> I really want to wear this around my neck. So that's uh, the main color there and my contrast color is this beautiful gray by Ashen Oak Yarns. So Ashen Oak Yarns do no, no longer dye yarn, but this skein is 75% uh, Merino, 25% Nylon, fingering base, and this colorway is called Windsong. Being that it's brioche, I can wear it reversibly if I wish. So I could have this side out or this side out, and it almost might look like two different garments. Garments? Accessories. <laughs> They're not garments. Um, now with this project, I am using this cute project keeper, which I actually did get from Julianne at some point last year, possibly during this same um, club, yarn club period. So there's a glass of wine, which I thought was perfect for my mulled wine yarn base. And I've just been marking my progress um, per day otherwise I feel like I'm not getting anywhere but I will pop this progress keeper for right where I am today so that next time I can show you how far along I've gotten with it. This pattern is very easy um, it's a two row repeat and it's a free pattern on Ravelry so if you're keen to try brioche I would recommend because <laughs> my first ever brioche attempt was knit flat so there were four rows to remember and I remember just being quite anxious about it all at the time but if you're trying brioche for the first time I do recommend a two row repeat something in the round um, which will make the process a little less daunting hopefully and make you sort of see the structure of it a little bit better. It flows really well once you get into a rhythm um, but it is definitely a stitch that I don't feel comfortable doing if I'm not able to look down so it's still not as mindless as something like a sock knitting project or just plain stockinette but has been an absolute joy to work on. I am knitting this as part of Nitty Natty's make along. Nitty Natty, um, she has a pet podcast called Love in Stitches which I have loved for a long time. I've been a long time viewer and uh, her Love in Stitches podcast she has now created some membership options where you can interact a little bit more with the community which has been lots of fun and as part of that membership she has a make-along at the moment which is there are two make-along options actually that are running up until I think the end of March 
um, and one of them is a brioche make along. So that's why I cast this on now, which I had spoken to you about, I think in episode one that I was thinking about casting on, but I kept putting it off and I kept putting it off um, working on other things. And this was a great motivator to actually start this project with the yarn that I had intended to. So I'm really happy with how it's working out. And I love a make along. I find make alongs so inspiring, which I think I've spoken about before, but in case you're new here, really do enjoy that. So that is the progress on that new project. And my final whip for today is another gift knit. So I'm keeping this one in just a little project bag that I got from Knit Crate last year, or maybe the year before, a little while ago anyway. Um, so this was a Knit Crate Extra in one of the membership crates that I got from them. And it says stitching keeps us afloat, which is quite true. Um, it is the design on it is by Lisa Marie Whiting, I think it's pronounced. Um, and it is a beautiful design on that calico bag. I think it's calico. Could be canvas. I don't know things about things. Anyway, so this is the project bag I'm using. The yarn that I'm using for this is an old Baby Soft 8 ply by Limcraft. So this is an 100% acrylic yarn. It's a baby yarn and it's basically a DK weight. In Australia we call DK weight 8 ply. Not sure why we complicate these things because I've seen some 8 plies that are not 8 plies and I've seen four plies that are not fingerings. Um, and not all fingering is four ply. <sighs> I, it took me a little while when I first started knitting to figure out what was what, because there was just so much confusion around the Australian labeling versus what I was hearing on podcasts and seeing um, on yarn, yarn dyers um, options as well. So yes, if you're a new knitter, eight ply in Australia is generally a DK weight. That's not always true though. There are some eight plies that are definitely more of a worsted weight. <laughs> we'll get into that another episode. Um, but so this is um, one that I picked up probably, actually it was one of my first ever knitting projects that I bought this yarn for. I bought two balls of it at the time, not knowing how much I'd need. But my sister-in-law was pregnant with her second son. I knit them a baby hat, which I think I talked about in my first episode. And I used this yarn. The colorway is I think called stone. Yes it is, it's called stone. So it's a bit of an off-white. It's more of a gray off-white. It's really lovely. I'm not sure quite how it's picking up here, but it looks kind of true. Yeah, it's looking a little bit whitish there maybe. So I had a full skein and a bit left after I finished that hat, maybe a skein and a half. And I did use the rest of that half and I bit into a little bit of this skein when I was knitting a baby blanket for another friend last year. Gosh, two years ago now. Um, and I had basically 80 grams of this left. And so I decided that I would use this to knit a baby sweater for a colleague at work who is currently pregnant. And I cast it on just the other day actually and I've got a bit of a story about this one but here it is so far <laughs> I have it I haven't quite joined it yet so this is the little oh gosh I need to look it up so this is the little cub raglan um, it is a design by Jess Whiting that has recently been released so it is initially knit flat and I might show you a picture of the project. So it is initially knit flat um, and I am about two rows away actually from joining this in the round. It just has a little opening here at the uh, just above the shoulder so it'll sort of join like that and these will be the sleeves this will be the front and then the back. 
Now I had a little bit of trouble with this pattern to start off with. Um, I purchased this pattern, it's a paid for pattern by Jess um, Whiting. She is Fox's Knits or Fox's blog on Instagram I believe. And I, when she first announced the test knit for this I had just missed it. I really wanted to test it for her at the time but unfortunately I was a little bit late. She already had filled her testers by the time I saw the post. I just thought it was so cute. I really wanted to give it a try and I knew I had a pregnant friend come <laughs> who I will need to knit a um, baby sweater for. So um, yes I really wanted to test it but I didn't get the opportunity to and so I bought it as soon as it came out and decided I would make um, my friend's um, baby sweater in with this pattern. It is a paid for pattern, I think I've said that already and I had a bit of trouble when I started doing the increases where it didn't quite feel like the photos that I could see online like I felt like it was flipped and that the opening would end up on the left shoulder instead of the right shoulder so I contacted Jess and she very kindly um, looked into it for me and very promptly um, confirmed that um, there was a little bit of an error in the pattern which she has now fixed and I recast on so I cast this on about two weeks ago I think basically right after I finished recording last fortnight's episode and then um, had to rip it out once I realized it wasn't right and recast it on again the other night so I've basically made this much progress in about two or three evenings I think which isn't much but again I was trying to knit on that big chunky blanket but it was a great break from those big needles to work on this so uh, yeah Jess was amazing at checking it out and fixing the problem and I'm really happy with it now I'm really excited to proceed with this knit and to gift it to my friend now I assume that I will be finished this by the time I record next so I'll have to show you some finished object photos rather than the actual garment once it's done but I I think this will be a pretty quick knit. Um, now that I've finished another project I think I should be able to get this done pretty quickly. I think my colleague finishes up at the end of this coming week uh, for maternity leave so I theoretically would like to get it done before she goes on maternity leave but I'm not too fussed if I need to post it to her. <laughs> once she's already home um, but I will definitely have it ready for her before the baby is born because I don't think the baby is due until April so I have plenty of time <laughs> but that is my final work in progress my final whip so let's move on to acquisitions I just realized that I never told you what I'm wearing today <laughs> <sighs> one day I'll get this order right. So I am wearing the very first adult garment that I knit, the very first garment that I knit for myself today. This is the Roselle T. It is a pattern by Patty Lyons and I joined her knit along uh, about 18 months ago for this pattern. And it was basically a sweater class in a knit along. It was brilliant. I learned so much on that knit along. I just had a look at my project notes from that and found so much inspiration in the way that Patty Lyons runs her sweater knit alongs. Um, you learn so much, um, so many techniques, so many uh, fluff, so many techniques um, and just so much information packed into a pattern and you really feel like you're getting supported the whole way through with video tutorials and links to extra bits and pieces while you're getting through this. So this was a mystery knit along too. So I think in terms of mystery we had already seen the finished garment uh, before we signed up but she was only releasing a section at a time so that people could focus on finishing that section and really understanding the construction of this sweater before well, sweater it's a top um, before uh, moving on to the next section so I think I should show you in a bit more detail though it's probably going to be hard to see here I am I don't have much room to move back but essentially it's a short sleeve tee it's got a little um, increase section here so it flares out in a bit of an A-line and it has that lace detail at the back here which you might not be able to see. 
I'll see if I can insert some photos of it in case that didn't work very well. So it has some beautiful um, lace work on the sleeves. It's a completely seamed garment. Now, I think like the majority of knitters at the moment that I certainly speak with on social media, I don't enjoy seaming garments. It's not a process that I look forward to. Um, but this is the first time I'm wearing this tee since probably just after I finished it. Uh, and I wore it out today. I wore it to an appointment. I wore it to the shops and it is one of the best fitting garments that I own. And I don't know that that's necessarily just because of the seaming or the construction. Um, I think the fact that Patty talks us through um, adjusting patterns for different armholes or if you want to add, add a little extra length to it in such a great way um, that it just fits me exactly how I want to. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend if you've not knit a sweater before or if you're just a little bit unsure about some techniques I highly recommend a Patty Lyon sweater class. Now I'm pretty sure that this pattern is still available as a sweater class it just won't be released in a mystery format that she did when I was first knitting it uh, but I'm pretty sure all the links will be there all of the information that you need will be there available to you but I'll link that down below so you can have a look. Sorry about the rant I just I've never really sh shared this FO in great detail to be honest because I don't think I even have proper FO photos of it. <laughs> I knit it, I took some photos on the coat hanger and I put it away. I wore it once to an event and then completely forgot about it. So I think I need to pull this out a little bit more often. Today has turned out to be a lot warmer than I expected it to be but when I was getting dressed this morning it was the perfect piece to wear with my skirt. So yes, wearing my Roselle tea by Patty Lyons today. So let's move on to acquisitions. The first thing that I will talk about is my fancy new mug <laughs> because I'm thirsty as well so I'm just going to have a sip. I go through these phases where I haven't can't decide which mug I'm going to use and I start trawling at C4 mugs. I don't often buy many much um, but yes I found this on Etsy and looked at it over a number of sessions and didn't buy it because I'm like no I don't really need another mug I have a lot of mugs but then I was looking for something else on a different website and happened to spot the same mug on there this mug is by oldmillquilting.com.au It's an Australian supplier so I'm not sure if you can get it overseas but this is who I got the mug through. This business card was in the box and it is uh, I think about a 350 maybe 400 mil cup. It's quite large and I absolutely love it. It is so cool. Today's actually the first time I'm drinking out of it and I love holding it in my hand. It is just giving me all the happy feels right now. <laughs> so I hope that you have a beverage that you've been enjoying while you've been listening to me jabber on about things. But this is uh, currently my new favourite mug. <laughs> so yes, I uh, thought I'd share that with you. Now something else I got last time was, last time, something else I got since I recorded last was a mug warmer. Purchased this because during the last podcast I noticed that my tea was stone cold by the time I had a chance to take another sip and that made me a little sad because it was a delicious tea. I drank it anyway but I do notice that when I'm knitting I tend to get involved in my knits and if I've got a cup of tea or a coffee there they tend to go a little bit cool before I remember to drink them. So I got myself a warming warm coaster, warming tray. This is actually the box of it or from it. 
I got this on Amazon and I'll link it down below. There are lots of these on the Amazon platform so um, have a look around there are different colors different styles there are USB ones this one has a 240 volt plug which is the Australian plug I got it off of the Australian Amazon site so just be careful if you're not in Australia when I link it down below that it might not be the plug for you so um, just have a look at that but I have been really enjoying this and my coffee is nice and toasty and really delicious still as if I had just made it which makes me super happy <laughs> okay so let's move on to acquisitions of the yarny type <laughs> now that I've shown you those things so I haven't bought much yarn actually I haven't bought anything since I saw you last so these are new things that have arrived but I bought them in December so does that count maybe so my knit crate subscriptions arrived in the mail this week which I was very excited about I had actually emailed knit crate earlier in the week or over the weekend just sort of saying is everything okay I never received a shipping notice for my last December orders and they wrote back really quickly within like 12 hours to say that yep yeah, we've got a shipping notification here here's the link so that was really lovely great customer service there um, but a few days later actually I think I emailed them on Saturday I got a response on Sunday and it actually arrived on Monday so sorry for wasting your time Nick Crate um, but thank you for the yarn so my December sock crate arrived and this was the yarn in the December sock crate Uru yarn by Nick Crate it's the unicorn sock it is 75 super Superwash Merino, 15% Donegal Neps and 10% Nylon, fingering weight base, there are 400 yards per 100 grams and I know that these are definitely or I'm going to use this yarn for something for my husband but I might need your help guys to decide what. So my husband has recently requested, actually recently, a while ago, requested another pair of socks and gloves, woolen gloves. So a few weeks ago I ordered some yarn for his gloves and it's um, just a merino nylon blend. I think it's in either a dark grey or a dark green colour. I have actually forgotten what I ordered. I'm still waiting for it to arrive. I ordered it through Wool Warehouse and so it's taking a little while to get here from the UK. But the intention was that that other yarn would become his gloves and then I would find some other yarn for socks. Now I know this is a sock yarn but I think I see gloves. I'm not sure. I'm trying, I'm very undecided now. Do I knit him gloves with this or do I knit him socks with this? So if you have an opinion one way or another, if you've ever knit socks with anything with the Donegal tweed, I think that's how you say it. <laughs> tweed neps um, in it let me know um, I just feel like with that lovely texture on it it just might make nice gloves so yes undecided we shall see I guess we'll know by next episode what I've decided because my aim is to cast on the gloves and the socks as soon as possible as they will be his birthday gifts his birthday is in April um, so he will be getting a pair of gloves and a pair of socks from me for that last year he got socks and a hat so you know he's very knit worthy <laughs> so we'll, we'll definitely make him something with this now there's always a little extra in knit crate boxes and in the sock crate box for December there was this lovely little notions pouch which is really super cute it'll be great to um, put little bits and bobs in there maybe some stitch markers or progress keepers it's very cute and it says yarn squat on it so yes that is very cute now my second and third acquisition are also from the December knit crate so in November when 
I had a chance to either skip or switch my um, preferences for Knit Crate, I was flat out at work and completely missed the time frame and forgot to do anything about it. So I ended up getting the Natural and the Energize Me colorways I think. So I think this is the Energize Me one and it is gorgeous. So here it is. Okay, so this is Ordine Wools and it is in the Twinkle DK base. This was a collaboration with Christy Glass Knits in December and this colorway is called Squad Goals. It is 80% merino wool, 10% cashmere and 10% stellina. It is 250 yards per 100 grams. And it is gorgeous. It is super bright. But I do think that this colour is really lovely. I am almost disappointed that I only have two skeins of this. <laughs> but what, what, what are you going to do? Luckily though, I also signed, I also had a natural membership that was active in December that I had forgotten to do anything about. And I also got same base, but the colourway roller skates. So these two arrived on the same day that uh, the sock yarn and the um, that lovely squad goals which is a bit of a salmon -y color but this roller skates color also arrived and this roller skates colorway is a pale cool gray i would say and it's got some the, both of these yarns have some lovely sparkles in them i don't know if you can see that but they look really gorgeous together so now i'm wondering do I put them in the project together? Because they actually look really lovely. No idea what I'm going to make with these yet. I had not realized that I forgot to do anything about that subscription month because I have been either, if I have two knit crates coming, I try to match them up so they're the same colorway. So I have enough to have a sweater's quantity, which would have been great. Um, but I do really like both of these colorways. So I'm not quite sure what to do there. I will make a decision at some point. The extra with the membership knit crate was this lovely yarn snob bag. It's a project bag that can be used, it's, can be used as a backpack and it's a drawstring. And because I got two crates I have two of these beautiful bags and I have plans for one of those and hopefully one of you will be able to snag that so tune in I'll talk about that later okay so that is it for the yarny things I think so if you're willing to stick around and listen to me jabber about other things then please continue watching. <laughs> but if you're just here for the yarn, thank you so much for watching today. Um, I did forget to say at the start of the episode, um, thank you, uh, well, welcome to anyone new who is watching today. If you do like this format, please feel free to like and subscribe. That's the first time I've said that and it feels weird. But yes, I do appreciate it. I get very excited when I see um, the likes, uh, the comments oh gosh the comments have just been so astoundingly kind and supportive and I'm so grateful to each and every one of you who watches um, if you're a returning viewer welcome back <laughs> thanks for coming back to check me out or check out what I've been working on um, I, before you do go if you are here for the yarn stuff I do have one more yarny thing actually so I I'm astounded by the growth of this channel already. Um, I think I'm at about 690 subscribers at the moment, which just blows my mind. I've been thinking that I wanted, want to do a giveaway. So I purchased some yarn a little while ago that I had intended for a giveaway on Instagram, but it just never happened. So I think if I make myself accountable here to doing a giveaway, then it will finally reach one of you beautiful people <laughs> rather than sitting here in my stash. Now this is a yarn by Fiber Lily 
Fiber Lily is an Australian yarn dyer. She is based, I believe, on the East Coast somewhere, but I cannot remember right now where. This colorway is Am I Only Dreaming? That's the name of it. It is her super soft sock base. Now Kylie is the dyer behind Fiber Lily. I remember picking this yarn up because the name was just so true um, and it's so fitting for for this giveaway because am I only dreaming like I never would have thought that I would be podcasting I never thought that I would be talking to a camera about knitting I certainly never thought that anyone would want to listen to me do it I thought well let's just try this out let's keep track of my projects let's see if I can build a bit of a community and I've just been blown away by the response so this is super fitting and it's a beautiful yarn it's a sock weight yarn and I love knitting socks as you all know so I'm really interested to see how this one knits up I have used Kylie's base this base before and it is a dream to work with um, but this color just looked like so much fun as a giveaway option that I really wanted to share it with you so stunning and because I have two of these bags I thought I'd pair that so definitely the bag and the yarn and I'll throw in some extra goodies in the mix of that giveaway now if you'd like to enter the giveaway please leave a comment below why don't you tell me about your favorite thing to knit what is the favorite thing that you like to knit on um, really interested to know maybe what your favorite favorite project is or has been um, I'd love to hear from you so I will announce the winner in the next episode um, I'll use a YouTube comment um, random picker and I look forward to seeing who I can send this beautiful yarn and bag to it's um, just been so overwhelming to see the support and the encouragement from so many of you in the comments and it honestly makes me so excited to think that you're listening and you're enjoying what I'm saying I think that's great fun so yes so that is the giveaway details there. Now on to a bit of life stuff. Um, there's not really much to tell you. Last weekend, uh, my husband and I went to a concert. So we don't go out much <laughs> to those sorts of things. And certainly um, our taste in music over the years have sort of gone in slightly different directions but uh, early January we were having a coffee at our favorite um, churro place uh, and we saw a poster for a performance that we thought had already happened and when we checked well it wasn't up until it wasn't happening until February so we booked some tickets and went with some friends and had an absolute ball it was a full day thing we were there from 12 p.m. through till 9 p.m. we saw some bands that we haven't heard even on the radio in recent years so bands that were very prevalent in early in our relationship uh, bands that we listened to a little bit on the radio when we were first dating and then uh, a band that we have great fond memories of um, when my first son was born and we were living in Sydney so we saw Ice House and Pete Murray if you're Australian you would know who I'm talking about uh, but Pete Murray in particular just that that's that was an amazing act to see and Ice House are just phenomenal performers it was a great great day um, the organizers did an amazing job of the social distancing requirements so this event was an outdoor event uh, it was by the beach one of our main beaches here in Adelaide at Glenelg and it ended up being the perfect day for it uh, we thought it was going to be super cold so I actually wore a sweater I wore my Felix pullover <laughs> on that day um, because it was cold and raining when we left the house but by the time we got onto the beach the sun came out the sky cleared up the, the it was an absolute perfect day just got a little bit too hot <laughs> and so we got a little bit tan but we slip slop slapped and it was fine it was a really good day 
Um, so apart from that, we've just sort of been doing the work and the house and the kids thing, helping the boys with their homework. They're doing really well. They've had a great start to the academic year, which I think I mentioned last time. I've been listening to some audiobooks that I've been really enjoying. So I think before the last podcast, I had finished reading I See You by Claire McIntosh reading, listening. I listen to audiobooks rather than read these days. I can't read and knit at the same time. <laughs> so, um, or I can't drive and read at the same time. So usually when I'm in the car or if I'm on my lunch break at work and don't have access to Wi-Fi, if I'm outside, I will listen to an audiobook. And so I See You by Claire McIntosh was a great read. Um, I really quite enjoyed that. It was a good book, really not much else to say. I, without giving you away the, the whole context of the book, I'm not that good at reviewing books, so I'll just mention the titles. Um, now, after my last podcast, so less than two weeks ago, I guess, I would have, I did start um, again, Where the Crawdads Sing. Now, Where the Crawdads Sing is by... You all would have heard of this book, but I have just gone blank on who wrote this lovely novel, Delia Owens. So I tried reading this, so this is on my Audible app. Um, I tried reading this book probably six months ago, listening to this book probably six months ago. And I think I got through the first three or four chapters and kind of lost steam on it and then started listening to uh, I See You by Claire McIntosh and really got very involved in that story. Um, and once I finished the Claire McIntosh book, I thought, let's try this again. I've heard such great reviews about Where the Crawdads Sing. Um, let's give it another try. And I started from the beginning because I couldn't remember much of where I was up to. I couldn't remember really. I hadn't engaged with it, so it was really important for me to start again. And I really enjoyed it the second time around. Um, it's a heartbreaking story in a lot of ways. There were lots of tears for me throughout various sections of the book, but then lots of joy and um, a real, a really good read like that's all I can say just if you've struggled through the first few chapters I encourage you to continue it, it's a deep novel it gets into the human spirit and survival and overcoming things that you just wouldn't think that you could overcome so I, I do really encourage you to check that out if you're a reader or a listener of books it was a real joy to listen to um, apart from that, I think that's all I need to ramble at you about today. I will be going to see my sister sometime this weekend. I really want to give her that blanket. Before this episode today, I went and I bought the box that I showed you that in um, because I wanted to package it up nicely with some tissue paper. So I'll try to take some photos of that and I might insert that um, when I'm editing and look forward to seeing her new home. It's so exciting that they're finally in their new home. It's been a bit of a journey for them to get here as well. And I can't wait to see it and congratulate them in person on that major achievement. So thank you for watching today. Thank you for sitting with me. I hope you've had a chance to knit on something good. Don't forget about that giveaway. I'd love to know what your favorite things to knit are or what your favorite project is. And I look forward to seeing you next time I record. There might be a bit of a delay between my next recording. Um, there's some things going on the weekend that I would normally record so I don't think I'll have an opportunity to record then but I look forward to seeing you as soon as I can and I hope you're having a very nitty week or a weekend or a day I'm not sure when this will go up and you're getting a chance to sit down and enjoy your craft take care look after yourselves and I'll speak to you soon bye mm -hmm.